last week. Last week. Ten second. No demos. No topics. I have one. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, but that was last week. So last week, no demos. Ah, no sorry. Topics. PRs reviewed and merged. Not so many PRs. But did we took into account the mix during bags? Uh, this week. Do we have any demo by chance? I have a, oh, I I have a little one uh, about tenant uh, clustering. So, so the PR. That's a big one, not a small one. I can't wait to see it. John <laughs> um, Thierry. Then we have topics. I have some questions around open ID and I appreciate some feedback. Well, maybe open ID that's... server. Maybe you should send a question there. I will paste the link in the chat. I think it's then, about the implementation in Orchard Core, though. Then let's check Orchard Core. Uh, maybe you can say the discussion uh, general, and you say something like that. But that might help. We'll see. I'm just super not uh, positive that we'll be able to, to answer your question. Uh, open Maybe, who knows? At some point, I, I would I would be able. I would have been able, but I don't remember last time I opened this thing and I. Yeah, we did great demos, though. Antoine, remember we even did a demo that we, we were doing. Um, we were authenticating APIs from console apps with tokens. It was beautiful. Uh, someone mentioned on Twitter. They were showing some. I, and I think I, I have experienced that also. I think with a GitHub client, like a console app, it will start it. It will open. A, it will display a QR code. And then you will use the authenticator app. I'm using the Microsoft one to authenticate using that. But that's actually a great demo. Just me. Um, okay, that. Then, 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 status. Orchard one, we merged some things. Matteo and Hermes were at the meeting last Thursday. We talked long, uh, long really about. Um, about perf improvements, and they also merged some things that is, uh, yeah, they merged this one probably. So, I did a feature attribute where it was missing an actual role. They have missing a feature attribute and a new feature, and then extension manager, they are improving the path for the performance. Um, in this case, caching. Um, some shape tables, I think. Um, yeah, Jean Fleury talked about it, like that, trying to improve the start of time, and I explain how um, we do that in Orchard Core by sharing the same shape tables across the lens, at least for things, uh, loading also the shapes only once, and then building the shells of the twins dynamically from these single. Shape, shape iterations and shape declarations or whatever. So they are trying to improve that and assure, assure that, ensure that it's not breaking anything, which I think will be hard to not break anything to the trend design. 
Um, if it's your content to is plugged in the integrating IMC, the content queues, yeah, the idea with that is a plugin where you can go to content item and to render the link to this content item. Content item picture. So that's for Orchard Core, Orchard One, Orchard Core. What do we have? Uh, second, here, Mike, this is probably one we merged during the meeting. I mean, dashboard shape when access, I mean, dashboard is not clean. No. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So because of permissions, instead of getting a full one when you don't have the access and mean dashboard permission, and the dashboard is yeah. If you don't have your permission, then the custom page is rendered instead of not being able to access the dashboard. When the widget feature is enabled. And Kedox, Trombovic, Fantosum, ZMD, updates. Use a unique name for the Azure and Azure and some provider. Someone found the bug and my key fixed it. Skin conflicts. We want an exception when linking a single user with new password. We need to do that on the first day. At some point, there is a check for the password, right? I don't remember where, but there is a check. If I remember from last week, it was line 688 or something like that. Ooh. Let's see how close my memory can get me. Holy yeah, crap, yes, 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 I look at that. Yeah, wow. because you said we are never calling what I said that is valid. So we are not validating the password. Is okay. Okay. So we need the admin dashboard widget. What the dashboard widget was CP. We talked about it last week during the meeting, I believe. And this is about moving this widget into a specific one. Well, yeah, this widget into specific CP opt-in um, instead of by before in the migrations. Fix dashboard widget that uh, you can't scroll if the content is too big. And you don't skim out the nine. No slider and a new filter picture docs. Okay. Update is not sufficient for this because that makes it some important issue. MKDOX material and MKDOX material because why not do it twice a day when they are released twice a day? Um, questions? Demo? Let's do a demo. Let's do a distributed demo. Okay. Um. How can I share my? You know, you see, that's the issue when people never come to the meeting. They never know how to share them. Yes, but uh, they are, 
They change uh, the menu. They changed it a year ago. We got all got used to it. <laughs> no. <now. laughs> yes. So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Oh. So what I did for the non-clustering, I am using the Microsoft uh, YARP proxy. So in the program dot cs i am using the it's no gentle it's like every time you show a demo i yes. have to start with the same thing which is explain what you're about to show and what's the okay. issue you're trying to fix because you're like, oh let's use your but why okay. thank you yes uh, so uh, i I, I will explain um, why I am describing what I did. So it's, it's about uh, when you have many tenants, it's about uh, distributing uh, uh, the, the tenant on different uh, servers to spread out the, the resource, not all on one server, but <clears throat> on multiple one. And the goal is to so to have multi server server and each one is able to serve any tenant, but by using a reverse proxy for a, a given tenant, uh, a given tenant will be served by a, a limited amount of server. For example, if you have uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, let's say 10 servers. <laughs> For example, uh, the first tenant will be served by, uh, by server one and two, the second tenant only by server three, and so on. So uh, it allows it allow to save resources on, uh, on uh, each server in place of, uh, of having a full built tenant, uh, all tenant on. Uh, on uh, all server. <laughs> Sorry for my English. Is it clear? <laughs> so uh, we uh, we use a reverse proxy. So uh, in the front, uh, so on each request, this proxy with, will uh, load balancing the the request. It uh, detects which tenant is targeted. And uh, each tenant will be assigned to a, a slot number, like uh, we discussed uh, a long while ago. And uh, do you know that do you know there is an issue for that because we designed it like five years ago? Yes. Don't don't we have an issue explaining the design, or it was just between us on Skype? Um, we uh, at one point uh, there was. Um, uh, a video, uh, uh, a meeting video, where you explained the uh, tenant cluster uh, and you were talking about uh, Redis uh, sharding and clustering. Consistent and, uh, passion. Yes, Cons uh, yeah. so they use uh, CRC uh, six, uh, 16, yes, uh, hash code, uh, not really, really hash code, uh, CRC 16 uh, code. Uh, so they have, uh, when they want to uh, to distribute uh, all the the value, uh, and uh, when they they re receive a, a request on the value uh, with a, a key, uh, by apply, applying uh, this uh, this CRC code, uh, they know which and Redis instance uh, should serve uh, serve it. So uh, I uh, I repose the same uh, by assigning uh, each individual tenant with uh, with uh, a slot number uh, the result of the of the CRC uh, computation. Uh, so the advantage is that uh, when when you have uh, uh, only two or three ten tenants, it is not very useful, but. Uh, uh, when it is greater than, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say uh, maybe 10, maybe 20, and then 100 of tenants, uh, the advantage with the code is, 
is that it, it's like a random uh, result, uh, but not uh, fully. Uh, it will spread out all the tenant, all the tenant in different servers, but for a given tenant, the CRC code will be always the same. So uh, it will always be affected to uh, uh, a stable uh, tenant num uh, uh, slot number in the in the cluster in the cluster uh, all the cluster and uh, yes uh, what i would say uh, uh, yes uh, and the slot number is uh, computed from the tenant id the new tenant I unique tenant id we have so if you if you change the tenant name you get the same uh, slot uh, number and uh, yes and uh, if we see at the configuration we have orcad core cluster we define it if it is enabled or not we define the the host here this is the proxy host so every time we have one it can be a multiple one if you have one of this one the application now that it has to to execute as a proxy at a, as a reverse proxy and uh, the main part is that we define a cluster and the list of cluster so each tenant Will be uh, will be served by uh, one or uh, by one cluster, and each cluster can have multiple destination address like node. So you can specify the only one node or multiple one. Uh, if you specify multiple one, uh, the second one uh, can be used. Uh, uh, with the load balancing on this node for this tenant. For a node uh, serves multiple tenants, but each tenant will be affected all the way to the same node. Or you can have there are, there are multiple policies with their proxy. You can uh, apply uh, load balancing, or, or maybe you want uh, always this node to serve uh, the, the, ten, the multiple tenant it serves. Or uh, and specify the a second address uh, uh, that will only act as a failover, and it is extensible, so you can define uh, your policy. And uh, normally, and all these one are exactly what you would have to do if you independently, uh, regardless of our chart code, if you were using, uh, if you are using the YARP proxy. I only added. Uh, some custom property for for what would be useful for for us and you can see here it's not a yard proxy property it's where we define uh, the slot range like uh, you you were explaining uh, in the all the vi meeting video about this so uh, i i did the same uh, we can have up to uh, 16,000 and, and some, uh, I don't remember exactly, 16,344, uh, 84, uh, 84, uh, 84 slots. Oh. Yes, I, uh, I applied the, the same. Uh, and uh, this, this cluster will serve this range, this cluster, this range, and this cluster, this range. So uh, you can have, for example, 100 of tenants, but uh, I don't think you will have a number of uh, node. So uh, what is what you have to put in the configuration in the node node you you will use, and uh, when you create a new tenant, uh, it will be added from one uh, to one of this uh, cluster uh, automatically, and uh, that which was the goal of, of, of this. And normally in a YARP proxy uh, configuration, you can define many routes, but uh, it's not the same exact notion of uh, what we want to do uh, because uh, they, are, they are not uh, tenant aware. Uh, we have tenant and uh, the goal is to distribute tenant uh, also. 
So uh, they can define multi, multiple routes, but what we need in our case, but if you want, you can defi define other routes and other cluster uh, regardless of our chart core. But uh, here we only one, we only need sorry, uh, one route, which I call root template. Uh, it's a catch-all, but you can uh, restrict. Uh, you can put other things if you want. Uh, and the root has many, many properties that I didn't use, but that you can use. You can define hosts specific to the root, and I don't remember uh, some policy, authentication policy. Uh, in the clusters, this is the same. You can define here the load balance thing you want to use, and, and so on. And uh, what, uh, yes, this root template with a, a pattern pass like you use when you define root by code. Uh, so we only need one root template to, um, to catch all. And we have, uh, but I did uh, something, but we have uh, not this one, where it is. We, an, we have a middleware that, that, uh, that uh, that uh, can, yes, context, try the cluster. Well, yes, we enlist the future with the cluster ID of the tenant, uh, of the current tenant, uh, where I do this, for example, uh, here it is the algorithm we are using. So each tenant have a, a unique uh, uh, cluster slot number, which by using the CRC says, uh, Algorithm, be, be, before forgetting, <clears throat> uh, what I want to say too, in my demo, this is the same application that is running as a proxy and as a, uh, a targeted uh, tenant because in the app setting, only uh, I will uh, start uh, three instances of our card. And I will start one uh, with the debugger with uh, this port where it is here. So the only one that will act as a proxy will be the, the insta instance I will start with the debugger. So, for example, uh, we have uh, in the in the settings the cluster slot. And we have option, this one is a cluster option, individual cluster option. And uh, we have option for all the cluster that hold the single cluster uh, option. And we can deduce, we can have an extension method, this cluster is ID. So when we have a shell setting, we know it's cluster ID, ID and in which uh, if it belongs, uh, of one uh, configured cluster, if it is the case, it returns the cluster ID. And uh, in this middleware, I retrieve this cluster ID. So I can, uh, this one is a uh, YARP proxy uh, things, e proxy state lookup. It's uh, a YARP proxy things that I use to retrieve uh, the current selected cluster uh, by YARP and I reassign it. This ex extension method is also a YARP proxy things. And I can reassign uh, for this tenant, the cluster uh, it should, uh, the reverse proxy, the proxy request should target. Is this so, part of the default tenant or in sorry? Is this middleware part of the default tenant? So, uh, I yes, I will show you. Because it is the same application, we have we already have many things uh, out of the box, like uh, I am using the Orchid core distributed, like a syncing tenant between instance and so on. So, when we serve a tenant normally, we are in the modular tenant middleware. And at some point, uh, we create a shell uh, if it doesn't already exist, a shell scope, and we invoke the, we go through the tenant pipeline. But just before now, if 
I, I should act as a reverse proxy. So this extension, what is doing? It checks the option if it is enabled. It checks if it, it, if it is from a cluster proxy, already from a cluster proxy. So this prevents uh, uh, request loops. And uh, we are checking, uh, I, I, did, I create a, a custom header uh, name from Krusty plus proxy. So at this point, we know if we have to act as a reverse proxy. And if so, we bypass the container middleware. So we are not in a tenant, um, we will be not in a tenant uh, pipeline, but uh, in, a, in a HTTP future. We, uh, we save the, the guest cluster ID in the cluster feature. We specify because we already know which shell setting has been, which tenant has been targeted because we have called this a shell host initializing. We have, we already have used the running shell table. So uh, the instance that act as a reverse proxy, we can have multiple uh, reverse proxy. Uh, already know it is a uh, it already shared the, uh, the Redis cache uh, data about uh, tenants yeah, and um, it uh, yes already know uh, the shell setting uh, the targeted tenant so in this um, HTTP feature we put the cluster ID and in another middleware. I already showed. Uh, we reach you the, where it is. This feature. Yes, I have. I made an extension. We reach to this feature, the the current cluster ID, and we can uh, say to the reverse proxy uh, to do that because we are uh, enlisting this middleware here by us tenant cluster. So this one for the uh, YARP proxy middleware, we are using the exact same extension than, than uh, if you are using the YARP proxy alone. And uh, this one, this one is a YARP proxy thing, this one too, this one too. And we just have to add this one and about the servers, this one is a YARP Proxy thing. This one is a YAR proxy thing where you can specify from from which uh, configuration section you you define your um, your configuration. And uh, what we have to add is uh, this custom one to uh, register the service uh, we are using for managing uh, tenant cluster. So uh, you can define in the config configuration, all the YARP proxy things. So to answer to your question, we are not uh, really in the tenant container pipeline when we are, uh, when we are executing this, uh, this middleware. We are in the YARP proxy middleware, but because here we have bypassed we have, uh, how you say in English, short circuit bypassed the tenant pipeline middleware, which is called uh, here. But we bypass it, but we use an HTTP context uh, cluster feature to inform the YARP proxy middleware uh, which tenant has been selected and uh, which cluster because we compute uh, this one. So uh, in my code, I have one part that I put in the clustering and uh, slot, cluster slot number and so on, which is not related to YARP. So what I showed you is not here, where well, it is cluster here. Orca core uh, cluster dot yarp, where we define, uh, for example, uh, uh, this one 
to enlist in the proxy, uh, YARP proxy to enlist our components, like uh, a, a, a custom config filter uh, and so on. And, to, and here, we are looking at the YARP configuration and we are mapping to a more global, um, more abstract, the option that Orchard Core used to, to select the cluster and so on. Here we have a, a cluster configuration. It, it's a single cluster, slot range, and uh, this it is another thing because I, I want to do also a, a tenant inactivity uh, checking because when you are serving, uh, when you are serving a, a given cluster to only one uh, server, for example, all the other servers, uh, after a, a max idle time, will, will release the resource of, the, of a given tenant. But about the option, if you go here, we have some abstracted, abstracted option where you have the slot mean, slot max, and the cluster ID, ID for a given cluster. And for all the cluster, you have the root template I, I was discussing, I was explaining. If it is enabled, the host of the proxy and the list of the single cluster option. Okay. So to demo it, to demo it I have to start uh, three instances of the same application. So this, this will be the targeted instance. And the one that will act as a proxy will be this one that I start from the debugger. And uh, also, uh, I hope my, yes, it, uh, I have a, redis, a Docker Redis cache that is running. And uh, I am there, so I need to log, sorry because I, I, I display the, the either host. I'm going to the admin. So what we are seeing here, this is a default tenant, but not of the instance I, I, I started with the debugger. It's already, uh, uh, you can see it's already um, what uh, this one, uh, not not this one. Where is uh, you see? So okay, if I go to the other tenant, you can see the instance. Uh, this is not the same instance. Uh, Five thousand one. If I refresh. You see, so it, it already do a, a load balancing uh, for the default tenant. If I show the tenant one, okay, you can see. Uh, uh, yes, I have enabled on each tenant can be done through recipe the already existing module, uh, the re reverse proxy uh, that already exists. To, uh, to forward the, the host header. Uh, it is useful for some redirection. Uh, otherwise, uh, it don't redirect, uh, sorry. Otherwise, in place of redirecting with the same uh, uh, ports, uh, you, uh, you get uh, this one. So if I refresh it, uh, so you see 5,101. If I refresh, I need to refresh a multi point. You can see, yes, oh, I mean, it's uh, another. Uh, so this one uh, is not balanced. If I go to this tenant, so uh, by chance, it will be normally in another node. So you, uh, it's uh, because I have some shared uh, destination uh, between cluster, but if I refresh it, Five on five seven. Is it the same? Yes. So these two tenants are in the same cluster. I hope this one. What happened? 
Ah, yes. Uh, you see, uh, in fact, sorry, this one, uh, 5002, this one too, but if I refresh, I think this is the second destination, which is not the same. Uh, yes, 5,000, and this one, 5,100. If we look at the configuration, we can see that I have uh, three nodes, a uh, three cluster with a uh, 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 two destinations per cluster. You can see uh, 5,200 as the, also this one, uh, 5,000. And if we see this one, they share the, the, same the same destination. But this is two different clusters when we saw this, uh, this address. And to finish the demo, unless you have some question, I can create a tenant. That the way I will name uh, tenant four. Hope it work. I will take the, the same recipe because it is easier to to click on the link. Here. SQLite. Uh, yes, normally uh, in the cluster uh, with cluster tenant, you you may have to use a, a SQL server database, but for the demo, that's okay. So I think it's okay. I will go to the setup. So uh, I uh, I don't know uh, which uh, instance uh, serve uh, this one, but uh, this is not uh, served by, by the the one instance I I started from the debugger. So tenant four. What else? This one. This one. Okay. I'm not sure if it is load balanced. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, we have not the same information because. Um, it, 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 uh, we are going to the admin because uh, it doesn't have the reverse proxy uh, picture enable. Will be click. Will be uh, easy to do. Okay. Okay. Oh yes, I could have enabled it from the the. the but uh, if I click. Proxy, enable it, and in configuration, where it is, I will forward forward this one. That's okay. So now, if I go to the front end, ah, maybe I need to reload it. Oh yes, I need to refresh. But normally, ah yes, we need some time to to keep in sync. Uh, oh, it's always. Oh, maybe something to fix. It was working, but uh, ah yes, maybe we need. You're to on the tenant. You're Sorry, on the tenant. You should. Have, you are on the destination. Ah yes, uh, a bad redirection. Thank, thank you, but uh, I need to, ah, yes, because the reverse proxy was not enabled. So if, uh, yes, thank you. So if we do some, yes. So uh, 5,000 and 5,100. So if it is, in, it, it has been affected um, automatically to this, uh, to this cluster. And uh, what is very good, uh, I did some tests with, uh, for example, uh, about the distributing of the slot uh, number. Uh, I did some tests with uh, Android of tenant uh, or uh, just, uh, for example, uh, uh, 20 tenant. 
and it's quite uh, if you on, it only have three tenants, it, it is not good <laughs> because you may have uh, two tenants in one cluster member, one tenant uh, uh, into one cluster, uh, two tenants, and uh, one tenant in the second one, and no one in the third one. But uh, uh, if you have at least uh, ten tenants. Uh, ten tenant, uh, they are quite good. Uh, well, uh, sorry, they are quite well distributed over the the provided uh, uh, cluster. Hop, uh, I was clear in my with my English, but uh, I think that's all. If you have some question. I Why do uh, I have okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Not sure. Well, well, I I don't understand why you have to forward those two headers uh, from the destination to them. Uh, I think it it can be done, but not sure. No, sorry. I was thinking about some configuration uh, on uh, the reverse proxy side. Uh, yes, uh, because otherwise, uh, if you don't do that, uh, the targeted tenant, it, it, it works uh, in the front end uh, and so on, but the targeted tenant, uh, when it asks to, to its uh, own uh, host, he is not aware uh, that it has been targeted by a proxy. It, it, uh, it is behind the proxy. So, so, the, so uh, the if tenant you is behind the proxy, so you enable the feature in SPNet yes. that will understand the X original host header or uh, X forwarded host. Sorry, X forwarded host header. Yes, this tenant. That's a feature in SPNet. I, I, I'm not finished because I want to ask a question. Sorry, sorry. So there is a feature in SPNet that lets you understand that you are behind the proxy. So the tenant is behind the proxy and we understand that the request was proxied by a proxy. Yes. Okay. So the URLs will be generated from the original, the proxy host um, URL instead of the proxied tenant. But yes. it doesn't mean that the the uh, original host needs to be set as a header and that I, I don't understand why you have to tell back the proxy or is it just for debugging um, so the proxy is at, at this uh, port yes. and the, the proxy is at yes. this port and uh, i don't know uh, i think so uh, this instance that we show. Oh wait, okay. So you're just showing host, these things. Uh, if we don't enable uh, the reverse proxy feature. Yeah. Okay. So you don't use that, right? Uh, I I use this to know the the real host of this okay. instance. If the reverse so proxy feature it? is not enabled. This one is empty, so I okay, then use uh, the host header, the regular host header. And but but why do you need to use it? Uh, when you uh, you have a redirection, uh, for example, uh, not on this one, uh, for example, this one, not, I don't like this one. <laughs> if I go to the admin, You will, uh, for example, with the ret return URL feature. Uh, if you go with when you go on the admin here, it's on the proxy itself. I did. I don't want. I made a mistake. Sorry. I want to go to the tenant what tenant one admin. Sorry. Okay, that's different. So here, I have to log in. It's tenant one, so it finds the the proc the the, the cluster. Mm. It goes there and it's served. Okay, so then, for example, if you edit uh, something, mm -hmm. you uh, normally you will have uh, somewhere, uh, maybe not. I don't know this one. 
one second. Does it have a return URL, maybe? So there are, uh, yes, so, I. Yes, so for every link that is generated, should use the one from the proxy and not from the tenant. Okay? Yes, because uh, so, if you do this, cancel, you will I see know. here uh, uh, 5,000. Um, I mentioned that, that you need the feature in ASP.NET to understand what from the tenant, yes. what was the proxy URL, such that the links are generated using the proxy URL. My yes. question is not that. My question is, so the tenant knows about the proxy URL. My question is, does the proxy need to know this or use this header? Yes. Why? Uh, because uh, if it if it see that it is behind the proxy. No, but we, it, the, I'm asking the proxy is proxying. So the yes. proxy knows it's proxying. Yes. When uh, it's receiving uh, when, the, res uh, the response from the tenant, does it use the, this header? Because uh, as we see in the app setting where it is, <clears throat> I, I am. Uh, we define uh, the host proxy because uh, when the this is the same application when the for example the tenant uh, modular tenant container middleware is running, he, he checks the host either okay. to to know that it has to act as a proxy. Okay. Okay. And uh, I have another custom uh, either because uh, you can redirect to yourself and uh, you have to know that you are uh, that uh, so you, you have why, a response uh, to a, a reverse proxy request and why do you use that because i could send a request to any of the instances and because i'm sending a request they should de detect that oh i am a proxy then i received the request Yes. Without yes, the header, uh, so I am maybe uh, you are meaning. Uh, um, I was I was thinking about this that uh, any any uh, tenant uh, any yes. uh, Orcad instance running running instance could act as a proxy. Yes, it is possible, but uh, you will have uh, some loop, some <laughs> uh, normally. I, when... I don't. No, because here this instance so. You have three different console apps. They are the same console app. This is the same executable. Yes. This is the same database. They yes. are all the same. Yes. But you have here the host property that we say that will tell which one should be the proxy. Yes. If you didn't have that, and I was sending the request to the second console app, well, the second console app will not care. Okay, I'm a proxy. I received the request without any header. So I'm a proxy and I will find the tenant and I will forward the request if it's not local. It could be local and that will work. It could be remote and that will still work. Mm -hmm. And if I send the request to the third console app, it will also work if I did that. In yes. a real in a real deployment, you will not allow people to do that. You will just point them to a specific one or two of them. Yes, we can have uh, many uh, hosts here without having this what i'm saying is that you don't need that you don't need line 12 you just say if i receive a request that is not proxied then i will proxy it because the feature is there you don't need that without uh, this property but it was to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, recursion in some because i am running the same instance to be a proxy or, or not and uh, and uh, I don't remember all the detail. Uh, I have some use case where uh, it was uh, asking to itself in an uh, infinite uh, loop. But uh, yes, uh, yes, this is something I, 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 I thought about, but um, was not sure to. But if, so how do you do that to, to prevent the, the, the infinite loop, the recursive loop? You check the host. So now uh, don't check the host and check a header. This is R. Uh, I am a, a reverse proxy, so the option enable, and uh, I am behind the proxy. I, I am um, 
this one uh, the original host is about the redirection but this one is about uh, what we are discussing so it's the custom builder i created that i uh, i have defined here okay mike mike has a question also and, uh, and uh, I think, uh, so I, I i am using this either but we can mm -hmm. We can uh, remove the check, but I have to check again no. what. What I'm saying is that you can use this header, mm -hmm. and you don't need the host property. But and I fact, can hit anything as a point. Uh, but uh, I already don't need it because uh, what I am checking just after, if I am not behind a proxy with our custom header. I uh, I say yes only if the this option contains. Okay, so you can remove it. Yes, work. yes, yes, yes. It is doable. Yes, uh, we can have yeah. maybe an option. I don't know. Or no. yes, we will try to remove this line. Okay. Line twenty five, and you'll try to hit the different console apps, and you will see it should still work. Yes. But in real life, people will not be able to hit any tenant. They will be able to hit just one or two in the front end. Yes. That's yes. it. Uh, and I already uh, tried it and it was okay. working, but uh, I am in a specific scenario. Sometime I was asking uh, through the browser, the other instance and not the right one and so on. Okay. Okay, good. thank you. So this right here is scaling out at the app level. Is there a benefit of scaling out at the app level versus the machine? So like, for example, if you're hosting on Azure, you can scale out. So you can add multiple instances, right? And yes, it uh, handles the load balancing. Is there yes. a benefit of doing at the app level versus the uh, server level or uh, host level? Uh, not sure I, I fully understand the, the question, but we do, we do it uh, at the our application level. Uh, because uh, yes, for this part, if you have multiple destination, it will do a, a lot balance. I will answer. I will answer. That's not uh, the, the answer to the question. Yes. I will answer the question. Uh, okay. When you scale I, out on Azure, okay. It is not when you scale out on Azure web apps. You have a affinity cookie. Okay, so which means if you have ten instances on Azure website, it will be ten times the same thing. Okay, but you don't have in your configuration the, the 10 times with the 10 URLs. So what you, what you expect is that um, you reach exactly what I just explained before. Remove the host. So any of these machines can be reached directly in this case with Azure App Service because that's the infrastructure that will point you to one machine or the other or the third one and so on, but always the same. Mm -hmm. So if as a user, I reach I go to tenant one, I will reach the machine, let's say one, okay? If I ask for tenant two, I might still, I will still go to machine one because I've been assigned machine one as a user. My neighbor will be assigned machine two, okay? Because I scale to 10 and, and so on. So it's not per tenant, it's per user. So yes. I will be assigned machine one all the time if I ask tenant one, tenant two, tenant three. But when I go to machine one for tenant one, I expect the proxy, to proxy the request to a different machine. See, actually the tenant one should be hosted on a different machine than machine one. If it's on the same machine, then I expect the machine to serve me tenant one. If it's on a different one, this instance should return me to proxy to a different machine. Mm -hmm. Mike, is that clear? Or? Yeah, but <clears throat> the question is, is there advantage yes. of hosting it at the app yes. level versus the okay. You have to because today, before that, that feature, if you scale out on Azure, every single instance or node will have 100 tenants on each machine. Because if you reach each machine, you should be able to reach any tenant. So each machine will have the 100 tenant. So by scaling out, you are just reproducing the same number of tenants on each machine. And you are still limiting by the machine uh, uh, memory and CPU. If you have 1,000 tenants, each machine will have 1,000 tenants, and it doesn't scale. 
you can scale out, but each machine will be super busy and even more busier if you add more tenants. By adding that thing at the app level, you are saying, hey, each machine should not load all the 1000 tenants. They should just load the tenants that have been requested when a request comes to them yes. for this tenant. And with that, we know we would say that, OK, one tenth of the tenant will be served by each machine and not more than one tenth of a tenant. And if you ask for a tenant that should not be there, it will proxy you to the other machine in the same app service that contains this tenant. So that's why it's still good, even in the context of, and even more in the context of scaling out of Azure. Yep, that's that says exactly what I was expecting. So my next question would it would be: so when you do that and scale out to Orchard uh, or the Azure, right? If you have an Azure and you're scaling out at the same time, you're also doing app level scaling, right? What will happen? Because still the the at uh, the uh, Azure server will still have to reproduce the same thing across multiple uh, instances, right? You can uh, you really can uh, still scale out on Azure side because here uh, we have uh, we can define multi destination, but a given destination is just a, a new URL, and uh, it can be served uh, by uh, multiple or shared instance uh, too. Uh, so uh, it's up to you. Uh, and as uh, Sebastian said, uh, the main goal is to be tenant aware. And uh, when you. And uh, 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 what I, I also did, uh, but uh, another demo, I, I did the middleware to, um, to add the tenant inactivity check because uh, if uh, some instance that, that are not intended to serve a given tenant, uh, if it is uh, already built uh, uh, after a certain amount of, uh, this is where, where I put it. Uh, it is uh, an option per cluster. You can specify a max idle time. And if after uh, this time, uh, no request uh, come uh, come in. Uh, it is uh, automatically uh, released where it is done. Sorry, it is done. It is simple. It is done here. We can we check uh, what we check. We have a last request time UTC, and uh, if uh, UTC no, uh, add, uh, we add uh, the, the configuration value to the UTC no. If it is greater than this one, we just call the, the release. And uh, <laughs> this is um, a, a singularity because uh, we release the shell, but we don't want to say to other instance to release their shell. So we already have a, a parameter to say uh, that we want to to uh, to, to to send the, the event. Uh, sorry, what what yeah. is the question for Mike? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Aha. Yes. Uh, yes but, but, uh, like so you went to really shell scope context. I think whatever. Nothing mm -hmm. to do with Mike's question or Mike's idle time or whatever. Yes. So to go back to Mike's question, I think there is an issue with app service in a way that because it's dynamic. There is no here dynamic configuration to dynamically add more addresses for for search ranges or whatever. So there there is an there is a mismatch here. There is something that's missing for for app service in this case. Um, and there might be a feature that's missing here, which is that maybe every orchard app that he started should be able to tell that it's there on this URL such that the main proxy or that everyone in the cluster can be reconfigured and say and be aware of that new address and change the slot distribution and then we can redistribute it dynamically for all the uh, Yes, this is a part uh, that was not uh, fully clear for me. I, I was 
hesitating. Uh, I, I was not. That's okay. That's the first step. But uh, I thought that normally this URL target one or multiple instance and uh, what we distribute uh, is a tenant. We distribute a given tenant among a cluster, among cluster. Uh, so uh, an individual tenant will be always affected to, to one a cluster. cluster. And uh, a cluster then it, can, run, it has a multiple destination or only one. And then what we so, do uh, beside uh, this URL, uh, it's up to you okay. to. So to, here, uh, what's important is that a tenant will be on as many instances as there are addresses here. Yes. So, yes. okay. So if I have tenant one and it would always be, be assigned to cluster one. Yes. Cluster could be 5101 or 501, which are technically two different machines. Okay. Assume two different. Yeah. So yeah. tenant one will be on two different machines. That's what, that's what we say. But that's the same cluster, the same range. Yes. Uh, and that's yes. also flexibility because this, this way you could say, oh, there, there will be only one tenant there, maybe. I don't but what it doesn't what but the issue here is that when we scale out in Azure, there yes. is a new machine with yes. a new address. Yes. And here it's, it won't it will never uh, be added. Oh yes, right. this is maybe where uh, where uh, I mis on, mis on us to the something. Uh, for me, uh, we can uh, yes. When you scale out on Azure on an Azure plan, uh, you still have the same address. To target, oh, you're right. Uh, you're right. You just see the different uh, machine uh, as yeah. I explained. Okay. Yes. For me, so, uh, this one is like a, can be an individual machine or like a node, mm -hmm. a node with uh, different, uh, but only one, uh, only one destination. So if you have multiple instances uh, possible behind this URL. Uh, maybe you don't want to specify specify two two destination, for example. But if destination target uh, only one instance, you may want to create a node, uh, a kind of no node by spe specifying yeah. uh, multiple destination. I will, I will ask some colleagues what what would be the strategy here with the proxy to mm -hmm. to detect to know yeah. individual addresses. Yeah, I don't think this will work with web apps like Agree. Azure Web Apps, but it might mm -hmm. work with <clears throat> if you have like Docker containers behind. Yeah, you know, I, I think Kubernetes it can work, or something like think, that. We think yes, about this is, yes, this it is. Yes, this is. Sorry, it work with this configuration file. I'm pretty sure we need a different kind of configuration file that will be fed to Yarn. Mm -hmm. I agree. But uh, this configuration, yes, it is a YARP, it is a YARP configuration. I know. And, uh, and, I made, a... I, and, and you don't know, but I made a custom configuration format for YARP, so I know how it works. Yes. Uh, and, I, and I believe that we can feed. So YARP is expecting an object model, okay? That matches like cluster and whatever. But we can have a different representation for us. We could have a representation that says uh, we have 1000 tenants and from 1 to 10 they go on this machine, from 10 to 20 they go on this machine. And from that we could build the thread ranges, the clusters, the destinations and everything. Okay. Yes. So the question is what is our mental model for Orchard? And then we can generate or load the mental model into uh, YARP. Here it's a it's a file, but there is a since YARP 2.0. Yes, but um... There is the memory configuration. It's a file. Uh, we have uh, abstraction options that has that are built uh, from this file, but uh, this file, uh, where it is, my program uh, is loaded here. But here you can load from any uh, configuration section that that can come from uh, any config source. That yes, can I'm, be... not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying a source ah. or a section or whatever. Mm -hmm. You will check memory configuration in YARP2. Okay. We have a memory configuration too. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be this format. It doesn't uh, have yes. to be a file. It can be whatever we want in database or whatever. And yes. and just tenant names and URLs. 
and then we can build in memory the clusters and the destinations that will match exactly what we have. Yes. In our mental model, not their mental yeah, model. Yeah, because it'll be nice to be able to edit that from the UI, right? So the app is running, you can just add a new so tenant. Example put that, specific that, so based on what we want to deploy, exactly what you said in the UI, for instance, or maybe because we know we are in the app service, we can detect all the machines and their unique URLs internally in the internal network and then mm -hmm. configure option to say, oh, the machine is there and there and there. Uh, it is already possible uh, because they have an extension to load things from uh, from memory and you you can uh, specify the what cluster. Did I say? What the did cluster, I say? What is the what's cluster, the name uh, I say? You have memory built. configuration. Exactly yes, what I said. Yes, yes, yes. It already exists and uh, you can have a custom implementation, a UI and whatever you want. That's what I where said. You, where you define uh, what you want and you will deduce from this uh, the, the cluster to to configure uh, here a list of cluster you have to configure. One one more, uh, just a question. So I'm like just now, how does that like background task or logging work? Do you log on every single instance and does background task work on every instance? Or is it one per cluster? Uh, it work uh, as uh, usual as before on each on on each uh, instance. Uh, so on each node, the same background uh, runs on each, ten nodes. Yes. Yes. Sorry, each, each instance that not behind the proxy uh, don't act. Uh, uh, that are behind the proxy don't act uh, as a proxy, but uh, uh, except uh, this uh, condition, uh, all uh, what they are doing is, is like uh, a, a regular uh, running instance. Something you missed, Mike, I, I assume, based on your question, is that if you have 10 nodes and 100 tenants, each node knows about the 100 tenants. The shell settings are loaded by each node. Yes. But the tenants are not loaded themselves. They don't run. They only run when there is one request for this tenant that switches the node. Which means that even if the 100 tenants are, are in shell settings on each machine, when you send a request to tenant one on one machine, then at that point, the background task of tenant one will be started. Yes. Okay. And just for tenant one. So if you never hit tenant two and tenant 100 on this machine, they will never run. Yes. Or if, well, I mean, uh, if you have timed, if you have timed background tasks, you know, nope. won't they nope. just run without? Uh, good question, because I think we did a change, right? So I'm sorry to do that. that. Uh, in the background task, we have the option to say, uh, uh, start the start the build the tenant uh, warm up the tenant uh, okay. ev even before the first request but so it's, uh, it's a contradic tra contradictory with uh, okay. the the freeing of, of resources uh, in this uh, in this uh, with cluster yes if you have a back contest that need to run on each running instance i don't know uh, yes you will uh, you will uh, you will build uh, this tenant on each instance, yes. It should not be enabled in this case, yeah. Yes. But, and the uh, same way, I, I, I don't think it's there. You have the max idea, maybe that's it. The fact that if you don't request a tenant for some time, it should be yes. uh, unloaded and disabled. Yeah. Yes, this is what I started to do. In a, in a background task. So, and, and that's interesting because this way, when you scale out, so you add more machines, some of the tenants, they will move to these new machines, right? They, they will be requested on these new machines and they will stop being requested on the old machines. Yes. Because of the modulo, whatever, modulo 12 instead of modulo 10. And uh, so what, what is fine to do uh, at this point, uh, it's to not enable the warm up feature I was talking about. And um, oh, maybe it, it works too, because it, it is uh, only used on, on startup. But uh, uh, in this backward task, 
uh, running on each uh, instance for each tenant. Uh, you can, uh, if I put a byte point, it is no more uh, executed when the tenant has been released. So uh, it free up the, the resource and uh, and uh, it starts again uh, itself automatically when uh, uh, an incoming request targets target this tenant on this uh, on this instance. So yeah, I think great it's stuff, it's, it's a great PR. Yeah, great, it's uh, to be to create an actual infrastructure, like you said, Mike. How does it look like with App Service, or do we need uh, ACS, or do we need AKS, or do we need whatever mm -hmm. um, Azure like integration with infrastructure? Yes. But uh, when I am looking at this URL, for me, uh, uh, behind. Oh, you, you will see the answers will come. Kubernetes, it can yeah. be a Kubernetes uh, node. Or... Yeah, Kubernetes, or how does it look like on Kubernetes when it adds more pods? Like, I think there needs to be a way to inform a central directory about a new instance is available so it can be reconfigured dynamically with new endpoints. Destinations. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, the, the same way is here. Here you are saying the same slot goes on two different machines. But what if I want the same slot to be on three different machines or just one machine? So you see, that's something we should be able to say, like the 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 replication factor. Like I have one tenants, I have ten machines. I want. Do I want uh, ten different tenants on each machines, or do I want? 30 tenants on each machine such that there is replication of a tenant. So there is high availability also of the tenant. So the replication factor might be an option, a global uh, option. It is uh, indirectly done. Don't answer because there is no answer to that. You didn't support that. I'm just saying these are things that we might want to support. Yes, but uh, isn't it uh, a little uh, implemented with a yes, slot range? with a slot range, but that's not something that a user would think about. They would just say, oh, now I want, you see, do you tell them, oh, you need to go in the file and change every slot and calculate the numbers that you need to put in the slot such that the tenant will, maybe, but so maybe not. So maybe can be a, a management UI. Where UI we, or whatever where format, our mental model is yes. different than the YARP mental model. And we need yes, a yes, transformation. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree. And uh, without uh, knowing the number of slots, uh, we can say if it only want uh, ten percent of uh, tenant uh, in an uh, individual cluster, in single cluster, uh, we can compute for for uh, the users uh, the range number. Uh, or... In the same way, we need to have the list of URLs such that you can compute the destinations for each cluster one, two, or three, or four. Yes, but, we, you, but yeah, are... that's, that's it. So yes, we can do everything from this file because this is the final YAP configuration. The question is, it's maybe not how we want to think about things. Or yes. Yes. YARP, YARP configuration file will not be able to detect that there is a new machine or system. So we need to build something that detects it and then build the YARP configuration for us. Because, yeah. Or um, let the user say, OK, when you scale out by one machine, don't forget to change the configuration file to also register this new machine. Hmm. Okay, that, that's like a redistribute saying... option. So I think I think if you have a new UI that allow you to add clusters, right? The code will just you know, or you can specify one specific tenant to put him on a cluster one or cluster two, or you can say every time I add a a new cluster, redistribute distribute tenant across the 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 clusters that I have. Yes, I, I think that's the, what I'm saying. This can be done by. Um by the third range, but uh, we can do a UI to, to manage uh, this, yes. But uh, if we have many, many, I, I thought about it, but I don't start uh, with a custom UI, because if don't you have a thousand of tenant, uh, it will be hard to, I think we, we can uh, provide a management uh, UI tool, uh, for uh, managing cluster, if we if we 
if we want to add a cluster uh, without having to to go to the to the configuration file yes yeah i, th I think once uh, sebastian comes back with some more feedback from the team about the uh, yes like how that would work i think that would kind of help us understand how the final look or the data need to be and i think we can build a ui around it which mm -hmm. will be nice this but, uh, is good when you know your physical machines, when you host your stuff and it's kind of static. Like I have 10 machines, yep. 10 servers. I know what their IPs are. I know yes. what my frontal is and I configure it. And if tomorrow I have a new machine, I reconfigure it. That's fine. For dynamic environments like Azure web apps, like uh, Kubernetes, uh, we need more integrated configuration, like an Azure web apps module that will work with the cluster. So we can just explain to it what we need and it will build the configuration for us based on the current environment. What you are saying is, uh, for example, uh, if this uh, URL uh, target uh, uh, multiple instances and, and this one... Uh, no, no that's that... not what I'm saying. I'm saying that here it should be the internal URL. It's not the public. Ah, one. yes. Okay, I understand. So you can. And that I don't know yet how to do that. You can't. Uh, that's you... what we want. Or oh, we should be able to do a filter with an affinity cookie because this is how we are redirected to a different. I will show you offline and we will understand. Just, okay. just. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yes. Uh... Thank you. It's already all our time. Too much time to internet. Not sorry. Really use, not use less time. Super useful. Super interesting. We could spend five hours and that. That more. <laughs> But yeah, I have to, uh, and, to stop now. Yes, and I think we can do many things based 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 on uh, what is already done. And... That's already awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Uh, okay, I have to go. Mike, your question next week or on the forms. Sorry. All oh, right. Thanks. Nice. Sorry, Mike. Oh, you're good. Thanks. Right. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.